I'm talking today with Anna Erdain from Bay State Community Services, going to be talking to me about the adult services that Bay State provides. Um, Anna, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me today. You're welcome. A lot of people are familiar with Bay State Services, uh, services for children and teens, um, but there also are a lot of services available for adults, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, have you been involved with Bay State for a while? What's your, your personal history? You've been working for them for just six months, or...? No, not even six months. I, about, I started actually about four months ago. Oh, wow. I was really okay. hired to, to help the adult services because I have lots of experience with providing services for adults and uh, running programs and different, um, and different settings. And uh, that's, that's exactly why we, they were hiring and looking for some. Um, <laughs> so is this focus on adult services really like a, a since COVID happened or this is something they've been wanting to do for some time? Uh, no, uh, they were planning to uh, to do this program and uh, COVID just hit. So it makes okay. it a little bit more challenging to to build a program from scratch <laughs> with uh, yeah. in the middle of actually in the middle of COVID. Yes, well, but uh, but so far it's been it's been going well. <laughs> I can imagine there's been quite a learning curve, and especially in this time, there's just so <laughs> many d new ways that we have to try to do things. Thing. I mean, I think there's some silver lining in that we're figuring out ways to be more accessible and, and people, uh, you know, we're finding new ways to communicate that actually open up our services to more folks too. Um, I know that, well, my understanding is one of the primary ways that you deliver services is through an outpatient clinic. Um, how do people usually connect with Bay State if they, you know, well, even before we talk about how they connect, why do people connect? We're, you're talking about helping people who have mental health challenges or are dealing with some substance abuse issues, yeah? Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, when we started the program, so when we started the program, we had a very soft opening. We didn't advertise it. Uh, it was just like really the spread of words. Uh, then, you know, we were talking um, to different uh, programs within Bay State and some additional programs, and they were connecting us with other agencies. Uh, one of the reasons, because it was COVID, and uh, it's still a program that we are building, building and developing, so we wanted to do just like slow. And... Um, and then the other reason is because we couldn't really decide what kind of logo we would use uh, for this specific program. So now we have our logo. So uh, wait for the brochures to come and wait, wait for our web page to, to come out too. Um, and uh, so this program is really for um, right now, we are open only for adults and uh, for uh, adults who are struggling with uh, mental illness and um, um, and or substance use. So it's not necessarily only dual diagnosis program, uh, but we definitely, uh, you know, uh, provide for the all spectrum. And at this point, only for adults. And later we are planning to open the doors uh, for uh, teenagers as well. Because, people, you know, teen go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You were starting to say about teenagers and how teenagers have unique challenges, I think. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately they are not exempt from substance use. So nope, this is true. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do most people find you on their own? Do they usually get referred from other places? Um, how do people, the, the first contact, how does that usually happen? So it can go actually from either way. Uh, we also provide some services uh, in our emergency, uh, in our local emergency rooms, uh, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, since Quincy closed down, it's only Weymouth and uh, Dorchester emergency rooms that we, uh, so some, sometimes people coming from there, uh, from different programs that we have reached out or out, because our doors are open, um, people can walk in. And then we have had a couple of walk-ins. Where, where are you located? Uh, in in the heart of Quincy at uh, 1120 Hancock Street. So it's really walking distance from the train station. Is there a phone number people should call? Should they drop in? What is the best way if they're not getting referred from an emergency room? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They can, uh, you know, they can definitely call us and then they can just call the Bay State main line, which is the 617-471-8400. Great. And... Um, and now receptionist will uh, will direct your call. Now I know a lot of times if you're you know if you're struggling with with mental health if you're struggling with addiction, it can have some severe economic impacts. Of, you know these are hard times for everybody. Just with you know or for for so many people because the economy because jobs have been scarce. If people who worked in restaurants are having a hard time getting you know if you work for yep. tips, who's leaving tips? How do you work for tips right now? It's really really hard. Um, so how how expensive is Bay State Services? 
how do people like is, is there is there an income guideline how does it work if i don't have a lot of money to come to you so that's the beauty in in this grant that we have gotten uh, because uh, if you have an insurance company, yes, we are going to be, you know, uh, billing your insurance uh, company. But uh, if you are struggling with your co-pays or if for some reason you don't have an insurance uh, or for some reason we would be the provider for your insurance, then your service would be free of charge uh, because the grant covers the expenses. And, and I know that like some insurance has like a cap on mental health services. So you can only get like a certain number of visits and then it gets more expensive. So you work with people in that kind of situation, I would imagine as well, because yeah, you can't say, okay, I've only been, I've been addicted for, you know, for six years, but now I get two months. I don't, I don't know what the addiction services are, but I can imagine it's got to be tough for people. So you, you basically take all that into account and just work with people where they are. You're not absolutely denying anybody. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's it's that's the beauty of this uh, of this program, that and we have different services, uh, different uh, services that we offer. And the other beauty, actually, that uh, you know how many times in outpatient clinics uh, you can only see a psychiatrist for medication if you have a therapist at the same clinic. Sure, we don't yeah. have that. Mm -hmm. So with this grant. Um, we have a different services we uh, offer and you can pick and choose. You can only have your psychiatrist if you want to. You don't need to have a therapist along with that. Sometimes people have established therapists for years. They just need a prescriber. That's fine. You can come and, um, and then see our, our nurse practitioner. What would you say? I mean, I imagine... It, there's a certain barrier for for many of us to even admit that we we may benefit from some help. Um, you know, we can feel down, but we could look at somebody else and say, "Well, I'm not as bad as that guy." Uh, you know, maybe you know, I, I I can just wait. I'll tough it through today. Um, maybe I don't want to get out of bed in the morning, but like you know, somehow you know, even if it's noon when I finally drag myself out of bed, I find a way forward. Um, and, and we don't want to admit that maybe we could use some help. What do you to say to people like that to encourage them that it's better to find, maybe talk to somebody now rather than waiting until and just hoping it's going to get better on its own? That's exactly what I would say. It's better to, <laughs> to find somebody. You don't need to wait for the worst. And honestly, uh, if I had this magic wand that I control everything, then um, uh, you know how with your primary care physician, we have our annual physical that we have to go. Yep. I would do that with therapy too. Even mm -hmm. if you feel like that you, you don't have any major issues, that's fine. Just come and check in with a therapist. And uh, you know, our goal is not to find something. Our goal is to make sure that you are taking care of your uh, well-being, your mental well-being, because that's the most, uh, that's the part that we most neglect all the time in our life. And then we are so good with, with fooling ourselves that, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I can take it. It's like, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know that's, there's many, many people I know. Uh, I, I, I could hold up a mirror, I'm sure, actually, uh, where it's much easier <laughs> to just say, no, no, it's fine, we can, we can handle this. Um, or we lay the burden on our family or our friends and we ask them to, to kind of carry, help us carry the load, which I, you know, I know I'm happy to do with family and friends, but there's only so much I can do. I'm not a professional. I don't know the answers. Um, and we can pretend that we know the answers, but you know, there's actually experts who can help us sort these things through. Absolutely. And you know, with the beauty of, um, of this, um, as uh, especially with you know COVID going on, you don't need to come to the office. Uh, we can even call you, or we can have a Zoom meeting. So uh, you can eliminate that stigma that oh my God, someone is going to see me walking into your building. No, we can we can we can do the session over the phone. We can do the session uh, via Zoom. So that's all fine. <laughs> That's that's fabulous, and that actually that's an example of how we're opening up doors in this new time, which is great. Sometimes there were concerns about privacy, and, and I'm sure you still are concerned in protecting privacy, but finding ways to do it safely. Absolutely, um, absolutely. I can imagine that sometimes people are concerned. Um, you know, maybe they're they're thinking they want to get some help, but they also want to make sure they're getting the best help they possibly can. Um, that you know, nobody wants to feel like they're settled, settling for the the government handouts, um, and that's not what this is either. How do you make sure that you're um, the, the people that are providing these services on that front line are are the best people to do it? No, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know your folks, but I want to make, you know, I, I know people don't want to ever be a test subject. We don't want to feel like, you know, oh, you know, if you live in this neighborhood, then you get, you know, top tier service. But because of where I'm at in life, I just have to settle for whatever I can get. That's not what this is. I don't think anybody is coming to you and saying, well, okay, I'm going to settle for you. You know, that just doesn't yeah. feel good. No, 
No. And, you know, therapy is, uh, is like a relationship, uh, you know, and I always tell people, if you don't feel like that you can open up, don't feel shy to, to discuss it with the therapist because the therapist is trained uh, to have this conversation with someone because you can be the best therapist ever published like 20 books and yet you are still not good for me. And uh, because it's just personality wise, it's, you, have to be, you have to make sure that you know, it's, it's really the right person. It's perfectly fine to, uh, to, switch, um, to switch a therapist, especially if you have discussed it that why it's not working. And the, you're not going to hurt the therapist feeling at all they are trained to to take that feedback and understand that they are not superhumans and um you know and on the other end that you know uh, my clinicians um and actually all staff members not just clinicians all staff members they are participating uh at least a monthly training on different topics and uh, we are also creating um educational series then they can continue they can actually pick more than 200 uh, different courses that they can take and um uh, there are going to be some mandated there are going to be some just like elective and then they can pick and choose that what they want based on their interest based uh, on their what they feel like and uh, we also have like weekly uh, individual supervision and the weekly team meetings just to make sure that uh, you know people are taking care of themselves and because that's also the field that you can burn out easily and you, the only one person you don't want to talk to is a burnt out therapist. <laughs> I, that I don't think would serve anybody any good. No, I'm glad you're working no. to make sure people are taken care of because that's, yeah, we do have to make sure as we're taking care of others that we're practicing that self-care too. That's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a big thing. That's a big topic all the time. Yeah. The, the last thing I can think of, maybe there's other things that you'd like to talk about, but, um, you know, sometimes there's a concern about how long it can take to connect with somebody. So, you mm -hmm. know, can you just walk me through from the time that I first call or the time that I walk in, uh, you know, in person, um, if I haven't presented because there's something just acute that's happening that brought me to the emergency room, you know, what, what's the experience usually like? What's, you know, how long do you have to wait for callbacks? What, what's it like? So once we get the referral, uh, then someone should be getting in touch with you within two days. And um, if you if you're walking in, then probably uh, you, you get the service immediately. Uh, if nothing else, just the, uh, the intake and the schedule an appointment with uh, with a therapist or a recovery coach um, uh, or a psychiatrist. It depends on you know what services you want. And uh, but really, our goal with this grant is uh, that eliminate the wait list that you can get really uh, services almost right away. That's awesome. That's great to know about. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting to ask you about? Is there anything else that you're really, you know, you want to make sure everybody knows? Yes. Uh, so the, the different services we offer, because I've been talking about therapy and then I've been talking about psychiatry, uh, but we also have a registered nurse because uh, uh, as I had mentioned to you, you know, the holistic approach to treatment is really important to us. So we definitely take care of the physical well-being of the person. So whoever comes in for an intake, we also offer them the, uh, the nurse services just to have a check-in, like, you know, checking your blood pressure and uh, see uh, how you are doing when was the last time you saw your primary care physician if you have a primary care if not we are going to help you to set one up and um, so really just uh, the physical well-being is the uh, for the person is really important our we are brains are part of our body what a concept right <laughs> absolutely yes. and they are connected that's Amazing. why you connect <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, you know, we are implementing um, a, a smoking cessation program, too. And um, if someone is interested in that or just reducing, uh, you know, the amount of cigarette they are smoking or anything else. So well, kudos to anybody trying to do that. I know that can be really, really hard to shake. So and I certainly Absolutely. support it. That's great that you're working on that. Absolutely. And uh, we also have recovery coaches. Uh, who are working with people who have history of substance use disorder or even struggling just to maintain their sobriety. And the recovery coaches can meet with them every day, can check in with them for 15 minutes if need to or longer and be there and support them on the long term. And, um, and then we are providing that service. We also have services like care coordinator, just to make sure that, you know, your psychosocial needs are also taken care of uh, we can you know guide you through the different um, uh, the different hoops and uh, figuring out how to fulfill all of your needs 
So how does somebody figure out with all these services, you know, is it kind of like you have a menu and you've gone to a restaurant and you're saying, okay, I want this and I want this, or is there somebody like a really good waiter who's going to sit down uh, with you at your table and, and, and kind of talk through the options and help you realize what's going to really be best today? So when someone comes in that we have a welcome brochure that it describes all of our services and then they can pick and choose and then an intake when they, you know, if they come in that, oh, I need a recovery coach, then the recovery coach, you know, uh, we'll also talk about the other services, what uh, we have here. And, um, and then, um, you know, the person can, um, can decide what they want and if they want, if not, they can, they can come, uh, you know, and then get the services later. Uh, that's all up to them. So I said that, you know, you can pick and choose what services you want. We are not limiting you and we are not controlling you because uh, we also, you know, want to empower you and then give the power back to you, um, the power over your life back to you. And we are just here to assist you, help you and guide you. If need Great. to. <laughs> you know, and we've been focusing all on individuals, but we did mention how teens have sometimes challenges. And we know that, you know, that we have older people that are no longer teens still living with family or, or maybe they're living on their own, but family's checking in on them. Maybe we have some, some older parents or aunts or uncles or something that are having some issues as they age. Um, are these services that like maybe, you know, if, if uh, I was worried about my, my cousin or, or uh, you know, my mother, I could, you know, I could contact you and get some tips about how to connect these dear people to me with, with services? Uh, or is it really best for the, the person themselves to, to connect? It's really best for the person to connect, but we also serve families because, you know, many times if, uh, for example, you live with your son who is very depressed, but not really accepting support, but it impacts you. So uh, then it's important that you are getting the help and the support and the self-care. If nothing else, a therapist can provide that for you to be, to be there for your son, right? So that's, we, we provide services for, uh, for family members. And also one demographic that we are targeting is the veterans. Uh, we have a master level clinician who herself is a veteran and she's also a former spouse of, the, uh, of a veteran. So she knows the military culture really well. And uh, she's a psychotherapist. So uh, that's, a, that's a rare combination and a very valued combination. So we definitely, you know, I'm gonna target um, armed forces, veterans, their family members uh, to provide them the support that they need or they think they need. And um, for next year, actually, we are planning to put together a veteran support group as well, uh, that it would be led by our master level clinician and also an, another male uh, veteran, uh, just, you know, serving a male and a female veterans uh, at the same time and providing some support like uh, once a week or twice a week, it depends on the need at the time, uh, they're providing that group support for them. And then it would be just for the veterans. Yeah. This sounds like just uh, incredibly valuable services that are just continuing to expand. And I, I really thank you for your time and, and for all your efforts to help really make sure that uh, we're all have the, the best resources we can to take care of ourselves and, and the people we care about. Um, this is really meaningful. And, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about it today. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed my conversation just now with Anna Erdain from Bay State Community Services. Uh, you can find out more by visiting their website, sending them an email, or giving them a phone call, or just dropping in. Uh, it's really useful to find out about all these resources that are available, and I hope you're enjoying learning about the community resources that are available for you and your loved ones here in Quincy. Please stay safe, be healthy, take care of yourself.